Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here. A while back, someone emailed me, actually a couple of people emailed me actually, asking me, what all can you use pressure canned chicken for, besides just doing chicken salad and things like that. And I remember emailing back saying something like, you can pretty much use it for anything that you want to put chicken in. Like you can make a chicken alfredo, you can make a casserole, you can make rice with chicken. And I gave a few examples. Well, today I'm actually going to be using a quart of chicken that I jarred back in 2015. And this was actually a hot pack method that I used. So it's not the cold pack method, which would give you a consistency or a texture that's similar to the canned chicken that you get from the store. However, you can use the canned chicken that you get from the store if that's what you have or the cold packed chicken that you pressure canned yourself in the same manner that I'm going to use this chicken today. In addition, I'm going to go ahead and use a quarter pinto beans that I believe I did a video when I pressure canned these and it was back uh, less than a year ago. So these aren't that old, but these pinto beans here, they're my working stock. So whenever I start running low, um, pinto beans that are already jarred up, I go ahead and do another batch. It's a lot less expensive than buying it by the can. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to cook a one pot meal to show you guys how easy it is to cook something with ingredients that you got from your pantry and long term storage ingredients like these things. Same thing with rice. So what this is going to be is going to be a rice and chicken dinner that has pinto beans in it as well. And it's going to be somewhat of a Dominican or Hispanic flavor to it, okay? I'm going to show you everything that's going to go in here. And everything you see in front of you is everything that's going to go into this recipe. Very easy to do. Only takes one pot, so not a lot of cleanup. Let's go ahead and start off with, of course, a quart of chicken. You can use less than a quart of pinto beans if you like, but these really do reduce down a lot, so that will work fine. In this case, we're going to use two cups of long grain rice. Now, for those of you that have been following me for a while, you know that I like the sticky rice best, but for this dish, long grain rice works best. We're going to use some spices here. This is one tablespoon of salt. One tablespoon of adobo. And for those of you that don't know what adobo is, you can find it in your supermarket in the Hispanic aisle. One tablespoon of garlic powder. You can use fresh garlic if you like. A teaspoon of black pepper. And one packet of sazon goya. And this is what sazon goya is. Right. You can find it next to your adobo in the Hispanic aisle as well. And this is what they look like. They come in little individual packets like this. And what this does is it adds really good flavor and color to your dish. In addition to that, we're going to use some vegetables. This is about half of a medium onion. Chop it up nice and fine. We have about two ounces of tomato paste. I would say we have about two tablespoons of cilantro. We have one tablespoon of capers. And I grabbed four large olives and I just sliced them up. All right? We were working off a jar that has the large olives. So I just grabbed four of them and I sliced them up. Now, if you don't want to put olives in there, you don't have to. Same thing with the capers. Or the cilantro. The other thing you're going to need is probably about two, maybe two and a half tablespoons of olive oil. And I've already got that in the pot and I'm going to show you that here in a second. Before I continue, let me go ahead and show you something. Now, if you've heard me talk about cooking rice in the past, in order to cook your rice well, you're going to need about two waters to one rice. Meaning that if you're going to cook one cup of rice, you're going to need two cups of water. In this case, we have two cups of rice, so we're going to need a total of four cups of water. However, I'm going to go ahead and save 
the broth from this chicken. So I'm going to drain the broth into a measuring cup before I put the rest of my water in there. So we're going to want a total of four cups of liquids. This also, these pinnel beans also have liquids in there. I'm not going to try to drain the liquids off. I'm just going to guess that there's probably about a half a cup of liquids in here. So I'm going to go ahead and measure my broth and bring it up to the cup to where it says one and a half cups because the liquid that's in here is going to make up the other half of a cup. All right, so let's go ahead and take it to the pot where I'm going to cook this. And let's get started. I know I said let's get started, but I figure I'd take a quick 30 seconds to a minute to show any of you that are new to pressure canning what you want to do when you're opening a jar of something that you pressure can, no matter how long ago. First thing you want to do is take a look at it. This is chicken. Does it look like chicken? Yes. Does it have weird colors or worms or bugs crawling around in there? No. That's your first test and it passed it very well. Second thing you want to do is you want to open your jar and you want to hear a hiss of air being sucked back into the jar. Why? Because the inside of this jar is under negative pressure. Go ahead and open the lid. And I hope you guys heard that nice suction sound, which is always a good sound to hear. Now, number two, passed all right our lid was nice and sealed and we heard a nice suction sound now what you want to do is, is you want to smell it all right first of all you look in there everything looks good still let's take a whiff and it smells really good it smells exactly like it should there's no off smell or anything like that one thing that you want to do if you can is try to wait until this has been heated thoroughly before you eat it. In an emergency, I would feel very comfortable with eating this right out of the jar. However, if you can, if you're going to use it for cooking a dish, try to go ahead and heat it thoroughly before you eat it, just to mitigate getting any kind of stomach bugs from this, all right? Although, from everything that I've seen so far, from opening it, from looking at it, from smelling it, it's exactly what it's supposed to be. And it looks like it's just fine. Let's go ahead and open the beans real quick. See if we can pass the test with these. Same thing with these beans. You can see they look really good. Let's go ahead and open the lid. I'm not sure if you heard that, but there was definitely a suction sound. Take a look inside. Everything looks really good. No bubbles or nothing like that. And it smells just like pinto beans are supposed to smell. It actually smells better than the store-bought brand. Right? Now let's go ahead and get to our pot. And we'll go and carry on from there. Right, now that our oil is nice and hot, you can see the onions dancing around in there. I just put a couple onions in there to make sure the oil was hot enough before I put in all of, this, uh, all of these ingredients in there. Just pour everything in there at the same time. going to stir everything around until it all comes together. Now I'm going to cook this until the onions start to become a little translucent. Then after that I'm going to add my beans. Alright, now that this has all come together we're going to go ahead and add our beans with the liquids and everything. I've got my stove on high, and what we want to do is we want to get this really, really hot, almost to the uh, point of burning it. What that does, ladies and gentlemen, is that brings all the flavors together and really brings the dish together as well. So we're going to cook this on high, not until all of the liquid is gone, but we're going to cook it on high, and then you'll see how everything looks totally different than it looks now when it's almost to the point of burning the bottom of this, all right? You just keep stirring it and tending to it for the next couple of minutes and it'll be all right. All right, now that this is up to a pretty good rolling boil, 
and you can see that as soon as I stir it and it stops kind of like bubbling if you let it go right quick and stop stirring it'll start bubbling right away that's really really hot and that's what we want I'm gonna go ahead and add all of my seasonings stir it around and let those seasonings work themselves in as well now at this point you want to be tending to this and stirring it every few minutes or so or every few seconds really you don't want to let it go a few minutes if not it'll burn to the bottom which it won't be the end of the world if it burns to the bottom a little bit but doing what I'm doing here stirring it around will keep it from really burning to the bottom and we're still being able to blend all those flavors together and get this ready for our chicken and our rice now there is one thing that I forgot to mention that we were going to need and I'm going to go ahead and show you that here in a second as soon as we get ready to put the water in, okay? I drained the chicken broth in our cup and then brought it up to three and a half cups. I'm going to put that in there. And now we're going to bring that back to a boil once again. All right, now the one item that I forgot to show you guys is just a simple bouillon cube right this is a chicken bouillon cube since i didn't use chicken broth to make this well i used a little bit that was left over in that jar and i used water i'll go ahead and put that bouillon cube in there now you don't have to use that if you don't want to if you want you can just use the uh, chicken broth that you either made yourself or that you purchase at the store but that bouillon cube in there is going to be the equivalent of about two cups of broth and like I said now we're gonna bring this up to a boil once we bring it up to a boil we are going to put our chicken in there and then our next step is going to be our rice and then setting it to, to sleep for about 30 minutes under the small burner All right, so let me uh, bring you guys back as soon as this gets up to a boil right, now that we see that it's up to a boil everything is looking really really good and it's really smelling nice we're gonna go ahead and grab our chicken, put it in there. Ladies and gentlemen, wait till you see how much chicken you can stuff in a quart jar. Look at this. This plate is overfilled <laughs> with chicken. Now we're gonna bring that, put it in there. We're going to make sure that it comes back up to a boil. Now obviously, ladies and gentlemen, you can put in as much chicken or as little chicken as you want in here. I just figured that one quart will feed all four of us in my family for two meals this will definitely feed us all twice so we're going to let this come back up to a boil all right now that it's boiling again let's go ahead and take our rice and put it in a lot of people ask me do i pre-rinse or wash my rice before i put it in here i do not i kind of like to leave the starches in there it's just the way that I've always done it, and it usually works out pretty well for me. It doesn't come out sticky or anything like that. So we're going to put the rice in there. Then we're going to let this come up to a really nice boil. And when it's coming up to a roaring boil, then I'll show you what I do next. Okay, it's almost up to a boil. And you know, I decided I picked some really nice fresh parsley from my arrow garden today so I'm just gonna throw that in there to give it a little bit of color you don't have to do this I just figure hey, you know what let me use it for this and I think it'll give it a little bit of color and make it look nicer I'll just go ahead and work that in there and now ladies and gentlemen what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this lid on I am going to move this to the smallest burner of my stove and I'm going to put it on the lowest setting. Okay, so I'm going to turn off this big burner. Alright, now that is on the smallest burner of my stove and it is on the lowest setting that that burner will go. What I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and set my kitchen timer for 35 minutes and start it. Once that timer goes off, you do not want to open it for about five minutes after it goes off. Right? And do not, 
for goodness sakes, do not open this lid at any time during the cooking process. If you open that lid, you're going to let all of that steam escape. And it can end up making your rice come out where some rice is crunchy and some rice is cooked. You just don't want to do that. So do not take the lid off your pot until after you've let it rest for five minutes once the timer goes off. Now, ladies and gentlemen, while the rice is cooking, I wanted to go ahead and show you a little project that I did during my lunchtime today, and it was to make some ghee. So I took three pounds and one quarter, right? Three pounds and one quarter of butter to make three full pints of ghee. And the reason that I had to use that extra one quarter is because that makes up for the solids and the water that evaporates from the butter as you're turning it into ghee. Now you will notice if you've seen my previous ghee videos that this one's a little darker than the one I made last time. Well if you remember the last time that I made that ghee video I told you that the more that you let the solids cook off in the bottom that the nuttier a flavor that your ghee will have and it will be a little bit darker. Now I've seen people make ghee where it was literally two or three shades darker than this, where it was like brown because they just kept cooking it until the solids were completely burnt in the bottom and it gives it a nuttier flavor. Now some people asked me a question asking me, will this last on the shelf and if so for how long? The best I can tell you is this is that from what I understand ghee pretty much lasts indefinitely because it is the pure fat that you get from the butter and if you have been following me for a while you'll know that I made some ghee a little over a year ago I believe it was in April of 19 that I made some and I saved a jar to keep in my cupboard right in my kitchen cabinet for a little over a year and I opened that jar not too long ago here, maybe about a month ago or so, and showed it to you guys, and it was perfectly fine. Now, when I am making ghee for long-term storage, I like to pressure can it because it just adds another layer of food safety that makes me feel good. Do I feel that you have to pressure can ghee if you're going to store for long-term? Honestly, I don't. But I like to add that extra layer of safety, just makes me feel good, all right? That I went through all that trouble and then it's going to be good in 10 years if I have to wait 10 years to use it. So what I wanted to do now is I wanted to go ahead and open one of these. And as you can see, just, just in putting the hot ghee in here, in the liquid form, it ended up sealing these jars really, really well, all right? Now this... These three jars of ghee that I have here, I will leave these in my kitchen pantry and they will be my working ghee until I'm on my last jar and then I'll make some more. So let's go ahead and open one of these up. And it had a nice little pop as well. And look at that. Isn't that pretty? And I'm going to smell it. Oh my goodness, ladies and gentlemen, it smells delicious. If you don't know what ghee is or you've never made ghee, Go ahead and take a look at the last video that I made where I made only one pint of ghee in less than 15 minutes. It's very easy to do and in my opinion it's one of the best ways to preserve fats for long term. All right, so give it a try ladies and gentlemen and if you do let us know how it works out for you. Okay ladies and gentlemen so it's been sitting here for about five minutes after it beeped. Now we're going to open it. Now remember to use a... <laughs> Use one of these, uh, a pot, pad, whatever you call these things. I always forget because one time I went ahead and just grabbed it like that and I'll never forget that. So when you open this, the top of it should have a lot of like the uh, vegetables and stuff that you cooked in it. Right. So don't be afraid of that. You have to end up mixing it around. Okay. So let's see what it looks like. And what does it look like? Oh, it looks really good. It's really good. So what we'll do now is, is we'll fluff it up and mix everything in together. As you can see, everything is pretty much on top. Oh, there you go. See? It almost looks 
when you open it, it almost looks like it's going to be too wet. But that's just a little bit of the moisture that goes to the top, which is fine. All right. And then once you mix it around, it fluffens right up. See that? So it is nice and fluff right now. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on a plate. And we're going to try it out. And I'm going to let you guys know what it tastes like. Because I haven't tasted it yet. So stand by. Now look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Isn't that pretty? Now if you have an arrow garden, you can get some nice little parsley flakes like that. <laughs> nice and fresh. And fancy it up a little bit. So let's see how it tastes. But look at that. I think that came out really nice for a one pot meal that I cooked with, with chicken pressure canned five or more years ago with pinto beans that I pressure canned about a year ago or so maybe and with rice that I have put away for long term storage. Now this right here ladies and gentlemen I would say is one serving for one person. Now looking at what I have left over in the pot I would say that it could probably feed at least another 10 to 12 people. There's a lot of food that was made with this. All right, so let's give it a try. Look at that, the pieces of chicken are so big that it's pretty much all that fits in the spoon. But look at that. Let's just give this piece of chicken a try and now try some rice and beans. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is really good. Now, when I pressure canned that chicken, I didn't use any spices or anything in it. All I put in it was a little bit of chicken broth from cooking the chicken. Because remember, that pressure canned chicken was a hot pack method. And I put in a little bit of salt, and that's it. And it came out very good. The chicken took on the taste of the spices that I put in there, and it tastes very good. It's not... Here's the rice and beans. Look at that. That looks delicious. And I'll tell you what, that fresh parsley on it really does, you know, make it better, in my opinion. Well, ladies and gentlemen, all I have to say is that this is a winner. Absolutely. I hope you guys give this a try. Don't be afraid to use your long-term food storage preps. Okay? Actually, make it a point to go into your long-term pantry once a month maybe and make a meal with the things that you have in your long-term pantry that way you'll know that should the time come where you need to rely on that pantry that you are going to be able to enjoy as well as your family enjoy what you can cook with the ingredients that come from within all right having said that ladies and gentlemen again i hope you try this this is really delicious and i'm not just saying that i hope that you try it and that you come back and let us know how you liked it Remember to be good to each other. When good people do good things, good things happen. Remember to reach one, teach one, and repeat. If we all did this, the world would be a better place, and you know that it will be a better place. Hey, those of you that did not watch the live stream, go ahead and go watch that live stream that I just did yesterday on Sunday. There is a giveaway involved. I know I just gave away the secret, but if you haven't watched it, go watch it and enter to win a very nice prize that I'm giving away. Many blessings to all of you and your families. This is Lask Prepper. I'm out.